So, um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome in today's debate and discussion. Today, we are we will be going through the six series of discussions that we had started back in June, and that shall continue until um, June 2015, and that is called um, Syrian conflict in times of war. And Syrian culture in times of conflict. And today we will be discussing, of course, the different uh, music genres and how and their uh, impact. Um, my name is Alexandra Sanders. Uh, I am a Swedish um, journalist. I have been in um, Egypt um, 40 years, and now I'm uh, switching actually my time between uh, Lebanon and uh, Sweden. I have as well with me uh, Mrs. Zerim Maghribi, that is as well uh, the uh, that is working at Shark and who is uh, currently working um, on uh, developing the media. This project, um, which is um, titled um, and which is about, of course, uh, preserving artistic identity, is actually funded um, by um, uh, Shark and by yeah, our own organization. I shall now give the floor to uh, Reem, who will start the debate. Good evening. As um, my colleague Alexander had uh, already, Alexander had already told you, this is the sixth debate in a series of discussions, and today's discussion is held. Um, um, in, uh, in and it is intertwined with the uh, International Week on Syria regarding, of course, um, music. Uh, we would like uh, to thank um, Eli for audio and um, uh, technique. Uh, we would like to thank Galwa for translation. We have uh, uh, would like to thank uh, the, as well as Eco House and Patrick from Hypernation. All our debates are actually on the are posted on the website using our uh, Facebook website um, and are titled, uh, of course, uh, Syrian Culture in Times of Conflict. My name is Rima Al Maghribi. I am the director of uh, Sharkum, and uh, I am one of the coordinators. And today's uh, discussion. Uh, we'll ask, uh, uh, during our discussion, we'll ask uh, three questions uh, to each of our panelists, and then we shall open uh, the floor for debate. In today's discussion, we have Mr. Ghassan Saham, who is a musician. who is known for playing al Kanun and is as well a researcher and musicologist. Um, next to him is Mr. Khaled Amran. He's a Syrian uh, musician who plays and sings um, with uh, many uh, uh, teams, such as, for example, Tanjaret al -Daghat. We have as well Mrs. Uh, Karin Guignar, who is a Lebanese-Swiss, who is as well a rapper and is known as well as Lagal or in Arabic, al -Jarab. We shall start our questions um, with Mr. Ghassan. You are Lebanese and in Lebanon, there are different uh, musical uh, genres, um, which means that we can listen to any type of music, um, and one can express himself using any type. Why did you choose um, Eastern music to express yourself, and to what extent is it related to the message you'd like to convey? Good morning. In fact, since I was a young child, I was born in a music ambiance and in a cultural ambiance. It's not I who have chosen a specific type of music. It has chosen me. However, with time going by, I have understood that um, since I have become a researcher and now that I am better acquainted with our culture and now that I have understood what are the weaknesses of our culture, and I have understood, therefore, that this choice was not um, wrong because we have only a few of our culture left. Uh, we are losing our culture, and that is um, decreasing. Um, and otherwise, um, I was, I, and this is why I have chosen um, this type of music. As a result of your choice of this uh, music, are you losing in terms of audience? Because you're saying that we are losing our culture and our music. Um, maybe this is due to the fact that young persons are maybe um, more um, enthusiastic about uh, Western music. Um, 
as you said, them, uh, it is music that has chosen you, but uh, do you feel that you are losing in terms of audience? Because uh, both ways, you have a message that you would like to convey using music, of course. So it doesn't matter for you whether or not you lose in terms of audience because the audience is actually intertwined with the message. To answer you, with regards to the audience, what you're saying is that uh, the audience is the one that might prefer Western music. I personally think um, it's because um, our audience is not actually well exposed um, to our own oriental music they are only exposed to one type of music so if we are managed so if we manage to strike a balance between both genres of music then there is no problem to have people who prefer western music but there is a problem if um, only the western music is the one that's available uh, to the extent that if anyone wishes to uh, teach anyone in music they will have to choose between pianos or guitars and and um, which means uh, that uh, they do not prefer any oriental type of uh, m music. In this case, of course, I wouldn't be losing um, any audience because uh, if you are true in whatever you are uh, presenting, you wouldn't be losing any type of audience. Now, let's go back to the message. Is there any positive or negative uh, relationship between the choice of a musician of a specific type of music and his or her capacity to convey um, uh, his or her message? Is there any message? Is, is there any relationship? Yeah. Yes, there is a relationship. Uh, this uh, relationship um, could be um, based on music. It could be based on poetry. It could be... Uh, using, for example, a song, using, for example, um, um, some music without any vocals or lyrics. And this is part of my project um, where I have, for example, uh, some uh, music that is placed without any lyrics. I haven't actually uh, played any songs so far. And this is the message that I am trying to convey so far, which is uh, to have oriental music um, in a specific type and in a specific way. Thank you. Of course, our audience uh, will have uh, many questions uh, to ask you. Now, I would like to move on to Karin. Karin will be speaking in English, so uh, my questions will be asked in English. Karin. First, about your rap. Uh, why, do you, uh, why did you choose rap as a genre? Uh, what do you rap about? And what, uh, where do you draw your inspiration from? Oh, hello, first of all. Um, I've, I've been choosing rap after like something like 12 years of making music in rock and punk rock bands and uh, I realized that the format of hip-hop and, 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 and the simplicity that it induced um, to be able to make it was more accessible. It means that um, if you want to rehearse and have a rock band you need a place to rehearse, you need instruments, you need amplifiers and uh, to be able to rap you just need a bench and a couple of friends and uh, a little music on the on a ghetto blaster or on the iPod lately, and um, the discipline was. Um, I felt it was more accurate to deliver a message. So about the message, um, it's social issues basically, and the daily life struggle of every person that I you know I can relate to, and it involves of course uh, being half, you know. Middle Eastern and half European, and um, I would say that, that there, there's n it's it's a mix between everything, and um, I've been brought up in this hybrid kind of culture, so hip hop was a good way to just express that. I'd say. Um, could you be more specific about the messages uh, that you deliver, the lyrics, uh, how they express both? Your, your goals and your messages, but also your hybrid, as you call it, identity as a, a European Lebanese? Yeah, basically we talk about um, the parties that we attend and how culture was has been, you know, recycled for, you know, money issues and capitalist issues and uh, that we like to make things on our own and be into this DIY scene that, I w that I've been involved a lot in. And um, it talks about cops, it talks about the weak people, it talks about simple things that people can relate to uh, on, everyday, on a daily life basis, somehow. Um, things that Europeans or people in Switzerland can relate to, or even your um, audience who are Lebanese or, or Arab? 
Well, for example, yesterday I performed uh, in Yukunkun in Beirut, and um, I was thinking maybe not using all my songs because I, I didn't feel they was appropriate, you know, complaining about your, you know, Swiss little stupid life when real things happen here. And in the end, I chose to do all the set because that's the message. I, I don't pick, you know, uh, um, one song for these people or one song for these people. This is, it's, it's pretty much of a universal message. Do you think that rap as a genre, because it was uh, developed or grew in the West, um, that uh, an Arab or an Eastern musician who chooses to sing in rap uh, or choose the genre of rap becomes more Western or less Eastern I would, as an artist? I would, I would totally say that now uh, it's not about Western or Eastern culture. Hip hop has been developed like worldwide and um, you can really feel like the origins of every rapper, every beat maker, uh, you get this in South America, so it will be, you know, influenced by salsa music or cumbia. When you go to the Middle East, because hip hop really took over lately, like like this ten past years, it just grew like really big in Egypt, in Palestine, in Syria, in Lebanon, and the DJs and the beat makers will be influenced by Arabic music. And a lot of our samples are taken from Um Kalthum or from uh, Fayrouz music or anything that is actually really Middle Eastern. So hip hop has a way to, you know, appropriate the culture that it, it's from. So it's not a question of, you know, being Western or Eastern anymore to me. Thank you, Karim. Um, we would like now to move to Mr. Khaled. Uh, Karin just said that hip hop um, has become a type that is very popular in the region, in the Middle East in general, especially during the past 10 years. Why? Why? What has changed um, to have uh, musicians express themselves using rap or hip hop? As she was saying, it's actually very simple. You are expressing or conveying a message. You are uh, using the words. Uh, you are actually copy-pasting reality. You are pasting uh, the image, the facts. And of course, uh, Uh, so actually, uh, I will repeat um, so that you can all hear me well. Karine was saying that the style she is using um, expresses actually the way she expresses herself, and hip hop expresses oneself. Um, it could be some kind of poetry because it uh, it has its own rhythm and because it conveys um, a reality. It conveys actually a picture that is nothing but the reflection of reality. So, however, why has it become more popular in the past 10 years? It's because it's simple, because every day's beat in every day's uh, rhythm, every person has its own pace. Every person can feel the beat, can feel the rhythm in a different way. Uh, some, pers uh, some persons, for example, can feel the beat um, at uh, 80 or at 120. So every person has its own feeling or his or her own feeling. And the hip hop is very simple. It's a simple way of expressing oneself. It's like we speak with each other. So it's a casual conversation that has its own beat. Question, you have experiences with different musical genres um, and every uh, song has its own message. How do you uh, find actually the relationship between uh, the type of uh, methods and uh, the message? We only have one message. However, the means are actually the means uh, to uh, convey a specific point or to express the point that you wish uh, to express um, and that you can express using rock, using hip hop, using, for example, um, uh, Eastern music and oriental music. However, it's one main topic. It's the matter of humanity. And it's related to the whole universe. You have three persons who could actually sharing uh, their own ideas. 
question. Don't you think that the choice of a specific genre would actually attenuate or diminish the importance of a specific message? If you are using, for example, Western music or Western uh, term, would it not actually uh, diminish um, the message compared to uh, an Eastern um, artist who is expressing Eastern ideas? The answer is um, people who are hungry do not think about what to eat. They could eat salads, they could eat um, burgers, they could eat whatever they wish. The persons who are hungry wish to eat anything, no matter what it is, because they are hungry. Now, if the genre does not affect the message and the value of the song, does the um, language change? You speak in Arabic and you uh, sing in Arabic. Yes, I have chosen my own genre. I have chosen my own language because it allows me to better express myself in a specific way. Each uh, person uh, can uh, choose his own genre and his own style. Yes, Reem says, um, a style is one thing. However, language is a different uh, matter. If you sing, for example, in English, if a person, for example, like the music uh, you are producing, um, you would, of course, uh, lose many members of your audience if you are uh, choosing, for example, to sing in English because um, as a Syrian artist you are uh, choosing your own message and you are actually relating to Syrians. I do express myself in Arabic and it all depends um, on uh, w w whether we are Lebanese, uh, Syrian, Jordanians, no matter um, what our idea is. We would like first and foremost to express um, and to explain the same point that everybody is trying to express. So if the language changes, um, the message doesn't necessarily need to change and you think that your message or your style did not change before or after the conflict. For example, in Eastern style or in Oriental style, you could um, choose, for example, uh, some very hard words, uh, however, using them on a smooth beat or on some music that could be Oriental. However, it is not less valuable than those who are singing rock and have the same message and is not less important than those persons who sing hip hop because they all have the same message. We are the sons of the same region. I could express myself in rock um, uh, using, for example, uh, Western, um, uh, uh, Western, for example, instruments. However, expressing myself in Arabic, it all depends on the melody. It all depends on the beat and, pa on the beat, um, and pace. Ghassan, do you agree with him? Now, to answer you, every person has his or her own way. I personally prefer when I want to produce something, I produce it the way I like it. But it all depends on the background of every person. It all depends on the style that this person wishes to convey. So what he was saying is that he introduces Arabic beat, which means that he is maintaining a relationship um, with uh, Oriental music. So if I understood you well, what uh, he is totally aware of his choice of the Eastern genre or oriental genre or style and uh, the uh, western genre and he's trying actually to strike a balance between both i personally believe Rim says uh, when ever since the conflict has uh, started that we have more musicians using um, actually um, more um, western um, music um, and uh, maybe the opportunities that now they have um, are more available maybe he would have wanted to express himself in rock however that was um, quite impossible in syria so uh, the music uh, that is syrian do you, don't you think uh, that it could uh, lose uh, this uh, pattern or this unique pattern which means that you have become internationals. I personally think that this is related to the uh, cultural policy uh, that starts with education. For the past centuries, we have been very fond of Western music. If we're talking about the beginnings of the 20th century, tango uh, has started and we want to been wanted to take tango and to produce music. Uh, 
and our generations were not actually brought um, uh, to actually understand their music, uh, to know their music, and then to make their own choices. This is not wrong. However, in the um, cultural and in the music um, upbringing and in the upbringing of the new generation, um, children must be better acquainted with their own culture. For example, I have a, a French student um, who has chosen to play kanun. She has learned piano first, and then she chose kanun. And uh, this, of course, um, this may not apply to everyone. There are many of the current and of the new generation who do not understand oriental music and who have actually a deteriorating or a very negative approach uh, to the oriental uh, music. And I blame it over the cultural policy that is quasi inexistent in our countries. It is not implemented in schools, at college, um, or at university. What do you think, Khalid? I agree with him on certain points. Now, my background, I have had um, um, courses in classic music uh, since I was four, and um, uh, my father plays Oud, uh, my, my mother um, sings uh, um, uh, Tarab, and of course, uh, they are, of course, um, um, very much fond of Abdel Wahab, Um Kulthum, Abdel Halim. With my father, I like to play the contrabass. And uh, to play, of course, the oud, and uh, to actually um, be um, fond of the maqam in Arabic and or in Oriental music. Um, however, when I go to conservatoire, I play classic music. So, which means that you can play the contrabass for um, Oriental or for Western music, and at the same time, you can use it for jazz. And the development of the contrabass is now going towards the bass, which you can use in different genres and different types, such as hip hop, rock, electronics. Which means that you have new music, but when a 17 year old person wishes uh, to express um, himself as a teenager. And um, since, of course, parents are the ones who are supposed uh, to um, be better acquainted uh, with the uh, Eastern music and Oriental music, I remember that I was only 17 years old and I was of course very much fond of the way my father used to play Oud. I was as well fond of the way contrabass is played. However, I couldn't express myself using this type. This is why there is the rock type. And now you are talking about yourself. I'm not talking only about myself. I am part of a larger generation. Now, what I'm concerned about or my question is um, the uh, is to actually lose uh, the Syrian culture. I would like to ask Karin, since you are um, uh, European and Arab, is, do we have only one identity uh, per language or you are actually um, a prototype of a person who has uh, two identities um, or an identity that is actually a fusion between Arabic um, and Western. However, in your music, you try to express yourself um, in a Western type uh, but uh, that you call a uh, globalized type. You have lived in Europe, but your messages actually uh, reflect um, problems that we are encountering in the Middle Eastern countries. So so do you have, do you think that every country has its own unique uh, culture or ID in terms of music? National musical identity anymore. I, I've been asking this question about preserving Syrian musical yeah. identity. Is there such a thing anymore? Uh, I don't consider this, uh, this part, the national identity thing, because if I would had you know chosen the national identity music of Switzerland for example I would make yodel and this is not my type of music when I was younger uh, my mother would listen to a lot of Arabic music and my father he was listening to a lot of jazz and country music and I'm still facing this you know hybrid thing and um, when people take a look at me they're just like you're not a rapper you're gothic or you're a ro you're a punk rocker or you're a rocker uh, I guess it's not a matter of identity and put a sticker, you know, on what you see. And um, I don't believe in, 
I'm sorry if I hurt anyone's feeling, but I don't believe in national identities anymore. I believe, I believe music travels so fast and so easily, and that's the good point of globalization somehow. I'm not a big fan of globalization for many reasons, but at least music has, has its you know, patterns. And um, it travels so fast that even in the 60s and 70s, you would get Nigerian funk or, uh, or you know, soul from Benin. And uh, that's the way it works. And, and being a hybrid is part of my own identity. So I, I didn't want to choose. That's just the way it is. And it, it, the result is the identity itself. Thank you. I don't know if I'm clear um, enough. <laughs> so we've uh, yeah, on now that we know them, uh, we know their simple ideas. If you have questions now, we would like to listen to them. Uh, if the audience has any questions, the floor is open for debate. I have three questions. Shall I ask them all together? I would like to ask Mr. Ghassan Sahab. You, s you have actually uh, said why is the Arabic music absent um, and why is it not part of our culture? And you have spoken about uh, the um, culture, the Oriental culture. I would like to ask him whether or not, of course, the audience claims um, or asks for oriental music. And uh, therefore, you have said that you uh, tend to uh, choose music without words. First, regarding the audience, I was actually answering this question with Reem. There is actually uh, a lack of awareness um, of a specific type of oriental music. We have uh, an oriental music that is absent and that is not um, evolving the way it should. There are no um, colleges that are actually uh, sponsoring this. Even the national one does not actually produce oriental music the way it should and does not uh, actually develop uh, the way it should. I don't know in Syria and I do not know how oriental music is taught in Damascus. However, here, I think that uh, Syrian uh, music is not only Syrian uh, in terms of Syria. We have as well the culture of uh, Lebanon, uh, Syria, Iraq, and Palestine, which is one culture, and uh, which means that we are all losing um, culture as a result maybe of a scheme, as a result of a theory. <laughs> Maybe it's a matter of uh, policy. Maybe I can interrupt um, with a question. If there is less concern or interest um, in the um, Eastern or Oriental music, um, did it actually increase um, in uh, the West? Uh, maybe if we look at the whole world, does it not mean that we are losing um, our Oriental music uh, or our Damascene music? We are, maybe we're not uh, losing it overall. However, in our region, we are actually um, choosing um, new methods such as, for example, Western countries that are trying our ways. The answer is I uh, do not stand against Khalid's experience, not at all. However, what is not happening is that to have a generation know its own experience and then to choose what it wishes to develop. This is what's missing. This is what is not taking place. So colleges and the cultural policy do not exist which means that we have a generation that is developing and uh, that does not and sees that it do we do not have our own music. You can have your own music, however, you need first uh, to know your identity and your culture. Regarding the audience, I have an experience in terms of education. I work with um, students who are not musicians and there is a lack as well of acquaintance or of knowledge of such matters and, and by the end of the semester because I teach them one semester 
by the end of the semester, they uh, start um, showing interest uh, to what they are uh, learning. They have only uh, taken the Middle Eastern music course because it's um, uh, elective and uh, they didn't find a place in the Western courses. And uh, then they are quite um, surprised to see what they are being offered and they are surprised to see to what extent we have a very rich heritage in our culture. They even uh, take from me music on their USBs and take many things because they are not well aware or well acquainted with what they have. They do not have access to this on a daily basis. You had a second question regarding uh, the uh, choice of um, music without lyrics. I am a musician. I am uh, I, I'm not a singer. And when I wanted uh, to write um, uh, music, um, first I had, of course, uh, some music without lyrics. And of course, I do not at all stand against um, preparing songs. If I uh, find uh, beautiful lyrics, uh, of course, I could put um, uh, music on those lyrics. Uh, but my uh, background is a, a musical background. So it's not about having actually the melody itself conveying the message in a better way than words. Of course, there is a different matter that is related to our heritage. Um, usually, words are better are a better um, expression of ideas to people. Now, of course, um, music it could be very beautiful, could have its own uh, meaning. Um, and, of course, music can have uh, their own message, it can have their own title. And this, of course, is part of the project. I would like to ask uh, Khaled a question. You have expressed um, yourself saying that um, hip hop or rock is actually a direct um, expression of images, which is actually a net expression of um, ideas. And maybe this is what I understood, or this is what I receive as a listener. Do you think that our culture as Syrians has changed? Do you think that we in Syria, and with the beginning of the revolution, and up until today, and as a result of the lack of expression and um, the lack of uh, um, this kind of messages, we are required actually to express ideas directly without um, uh, going into hints or going into images. Usually we used to, th to talk a lot in order to convey our messages. So do you think that this uh, short speech or straightforward is uh, more um, required or more demanded? The poetry that we uh, develop um, is a poetry that means that, that we can express the word that is more convenient. Now we have the image. So why go and dig into words? The war is not only an external war. It is a war that um, would have a person express himself using words. Sometimes people could be silent. So if he can sing the song, then why not? Without attempting uh, to express uh, the ideas in uh, different ways. So to be more eloquent, if a person, for example, is actually facing an obstacle, then he is supposed to overcome the obstacle himself and not to have anyone else um, assist him in order for him to understand what is going on and what type of obstacles he is facing. Another question? I wish to address my question to Khalid. The, uh, the song How did you come up with this song? Tanjar Daghat's album How did you actually uh, come up with such a beautiful album uh, in s in on such short notice and to what extent it is, uh, is it related to the Middle Eastern music uh, that you have uh, studied? Another question to Hassan How can you have an encounter between um, theories that are related to um, different moving dimensions and a music that is hybrid and that is related uh, to the harmonious Western music. You have asked me two questions. 
The first question is addressed to me, and the second question is addressed uh, to uh, Hassan. Maybe you can rephrase my question because I have forgotten mine. The first question, we were talking about poetry and uh, and uh, lyrics. How did you write uh, Tanjar al uh, The album that is called 180 Degrees. Uh, the, the lyrics are very simple. They speak about me, they speak about you, they speak about any other person on earth. It is not only related to people who are living um, within a specific area because we, uh, we all face war, we all suffer from war. Um, this evil um, it's very difficult to um, face such problems and to be capable of um, playing on this chemistry sometimes of course if you are natural you can express yourself using simple words now you are asking me questions and uh, the way I'm expressing myself is very simple and this, of course, uh, with uh, some uh, music, it can lead uh, to a beautiful song. Yes, but so far we, st we still haven't heard from you a new album. Yes, because the first um, album that is called uh, eight, uh, 180 Degrees was actually a quantum leap because uh, we have moved from one location to another in order to make sure that we have in order to uh, to have actually this 180 degrees, uh, this change, though the method could be uh, thought by some to be indie rock, post rock, rock, um, but uh, drums, bass, guitar, um, uh, and um, some music. Um, this is what it's all about. The second album is still not produced. It will be produced soon. We have encountered uh, many problems with the first uh, album that uh, still haven't been uh, promoted uh, or, um, properly. And the second album says how we are living now in a way that is relevant uh, to this uh, region. Can you ask a question again to Mr. Hassan? It's about your relationship uh, with um, Eastern or um, Oriental Middle Eastern music. I adore this music. Of course, um, I have to listen to this music um, on a constant basis. If I do not listen to jazz or to electronics, if I do not hear voices or music, um, um, the relationship uh, with my life um, and my life is actually... Um, is actually uh, moving around the beat of music. Um, many in uh, Syria have wanted to express themselves um, in uh, Western music and um, uh, Syrian uh, young persons uh, wanted uh, to listen more to Western music than to Arab music. Now, if I am to think again about um, all the music, uh, maybe because uh, no one produced anything that was of a high quality. And uh, this is what you were saying. Do you agree with me, Khaled? since you were as well in Syria, is this what happened? I can tell you that even Oriental music um, and the way it is produced today, what is on the market and the commercial market and the commercial music that we have, this is what people uh, think uh, or associate to uh, Oriental music, but this is not true. Are people actually um, in disrespect of this music because of the low quality? because it is actually uh, fast food music no but maybe it is if maybe it is politicized maybe it's a uh, politicized decision by um, the syrian youth is it only related uh, to the quality of music or is it as well uh, related to the politicized uh, approach of uh, syrian youth who are actually choosing western music to answer you, I think it's a matter of a lack of culture people are not open enough in order to have associations or comparisons I am one of them. At one point, I um, did not appreciate Oriental music and I have uh, chosen uh, the music uh, where I could express myself. However, I have noted later on that uh, we have our pulse. Karine, do you think uh, that uh, the choice of an individual 
or a person's choice to listen to Western music is politicized or the choice to listen to Arabic music is politicized? Was it actually the case in Europe? In Europe, of course, they have total freedom and maybe they do not uh, choose as a result of politics or as a result of uh, negativism or rejection. But according to your experience, is it politicized? to music is politic and no so so it means that it depends on the the media as you choose to listen to that music he was talking about uh, the souk so that that's what you know gets and reaches uh, the souk is not it's, it's just like a little outskirt of everything you can find especially now with the internet and everything no like people have a big choice and the problem is like that the media just you know uh, picks like very commercial and 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 uh, and lay music to show to the people. That's and, and 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 in Europe we also get that. So you need to you know find the right way to get the music. So you can go to a record shop, you can go to concerts, and you need a context also to be able to listen to the music you want. Uh, that means that if you just, you know, sit and watch your TV, for example, MTV, you would just get like mostly shit, and that's that's the way it works. Okay, I, I say shit because I judge it, but it's a lot of commercial music, and um, this is politics. I know you can't know. This requires a survey and a study. But what do you think is behind the reason that uh, people in the Arab world, or at least that say Lebanon and Syria, are the context of our discussion? Um, the youth started listening to Western music a lot more, Western genres a lot more. And at the same time, musicians started performing in those genres more in recent uh, years or decades. Do you think there's a politically motivated reason behind that or it's purely based on quality of, of music or as Bassam was suggesting, a change in uh, cultural education or the education of culture? Uh, what are your thoughts? Probably the fact, like I, I w as I was saying before, music travels a lot, and we have this chance to be able to pick any kind of music we want. But also, uh, when you listen too much to this kind, you know, to, to this kind of music that isn't absolutely yours, it's not part of your culture. You get the feeling that you want to, you know, get back to it. So I guess it's, it's just like it's it's like different waves of things and also people traveled a lot especially in Lebanon a lot of people went abroad they went to France and America so they, they brought back new styles of music and uh, and it can absolutely fit any identity as far as far as the message and the way you play it is uh, you know um, is appropriate with the situation you're in uh, what do you think, Hassan? I think that, um, according to what Khalid said, some music um, is now commercial. It's fast food music. It is related to production companies, and those production companies are the ones in control of this. So it's a matter that is related to funding. Now, if you have cultural projects, and this is what I was saying, the cultural uh, policy is the one to determine where o or where to go in terms of culture. We have, of course, alternative uh, projects. However, those projects are either projects that are a copy paste of Western projects, and therefore they are not actually um, corresponding to our culture, to our um, heritage. So if you wanted to have any cultural project, we wanted to copy paste something that you have seen in the States and France. Knowing that we do have many things in our culture or in our heritage and civilization that we still have not digged into and that we are still not aware of. We have, of course, in our culture many elements that we do not know. We are simply going to the easiest uh, to copy pasting we are not producing anything from within and um, you were of course talking about politics whether or not it's politicized regardless i think that there is something that is actually taking us towards falling into amnesia i think that there is something driving us down this way there is something politicized 
questions? Specific uh, to you, I hope it's a bit difficult to put into words as well, but you were saying that um, you, exp you experimented with a lot of other music before you chose the medium of rap. Yep. And I, just was, I was just wondering because you were saying it's for the sake of accessibility and um, simplicity, but, but the decision to, cho I mean, the decision of choosing rap is not at all a simple decision because that's, that's a framework, like it's a box. So I just wanted to ask you about the challenge of reducing, I don't mean it in a negative way, but reducing yourself to that medium when you have so, when obviously you and what you stand for and your feelings and all that stuff transcends any particular genre. So I just want to ask you about the challenge of, of choosing rap, for example, when you had, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it was, it, it was a very natural choice. And um, it just worked for you. It just worked because I was in this punk rock scene for ages and, uh, and I still really can relate to the punk rock message in the DIY scene because... And you can fuse punk rock with rap anyway, so... And, and to me, it, it just fits together. And um, I started listening to more hip hop like uh, maybe 10 years ago. And uh, I just started practicing on my own, you know, uh, down the shower in my room. And um, in the end, my band, we split with the band. And um, I was like, okay, just let's do it. And I started writing lyrics. And um, in the end, some friends gave me beats. And uh, it, it just went on pretty natural yeah. in the end. Yeah, what I meant, because I know that rap can communicate a lot of things, but it still mm -hmm. is a very specific framework. And it does, in a way, reduce it you. didn't because the scene I was involved in right. and the punk rockers that were backing us at this time were very, very fond of hip hop music. So, and I come from a very small town uh, called Lausanne yeah. and um, we didn't have many chances to have parties and concerts and stuff like that. It's and a very, it's a very, uh, I've been there, it's a very kind of bleak, you, you cannot afford. You cannot afford boundaries, empty. to put boundaries. It's not empty, it's just that we have like a very small core of people who wants to you know, be active, organize concerts and shows, and these people are fond of a lot of different music. So at the very beginning, we started doing our shows and many different people were attending them. And, 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 and you know, regardless of uh, what, what, what gender and, and what music they were listening to, and, 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 and at the end of my shows, there's a lot of people, sometimes they come to me and they're just like, you know, I hate hip hop, but I like the show. So I never know how to take this as a compliment or but as- that is a compliment. Mm. I don't know, but still, it, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that it still, you know, touches a lot of different people. And we were really first, for the first year, we were really stuck to this DIY scene. And then we chose to open the gates and show it, you know, take the risk to show it to, to a lot of different people. We have time now just for two, maximum three more questions. I know what the question is Once we finish uh, our uh, formal discussion, we will still have the opportunity to uh, discuss um, among ourselves. Um, good evening. In India, there is uh, a saying, um, I think Gandhi said it. Uh, it says that I open the window of my house in order to have a breeze or a nice breeze come in and not to have a storm come in and destroy the house. It's something similar to this. I cannot recall the accurate words, says the gentleman. Um, as an Arab person, I do not think that rap uh, represents me. Of course, um, I could um, relate uh, to the Western civilization um, if we would like, maybe for example, in terms of rap, uh, only uh, the, the only the lyrics change, whereas uh, the uh, melody is the same. And even in terms of words, I try to focus um, because uh, they are spoken in such a fast pace. Because I try, of course, sometimes to grasp an image. Um, you're talking about uh, social issues, yes, but those social issues can be dealt with um, by means of a different um, uh, oriental, for example, way. Omar Zanni used to have, uh, or Sayyid Darwish, uh, Sayyid Makawi as well, had some kind of um, uh, songs that have, of course, uh, social criticism. 
do you think that music is a matter of culture? So I would like to ask Karen the question. Do you think music is a culture or an entertainment? It's both of them, I would say. And uh, um, uh, how can I put up this? Um, for example, um, Arabic hip hop uh, sometimes was like even rap in fosha, which is like the total fosha discipline and uh, the words and, uh, and the poetry was really close to, to some traditional literature. And uh, no matter, so that's, that's the good point about hip hop. You can really use your own culture and, and where you're from and just put it in words and music and it, and it becomes this identity. I don't know if I'm clear enough. What do you think, Khalid? Maybe you still haven't listened a lot to Arabic uh, hip hop or, or rapper or rap. There are some persons who are actually <laughs> citing poetry. In terms of poetry, it is very nice. Second, the music that is accompanying this is actually the noise of the p of the place where we are living. So it is actually conveying the message in terms of music and in terms of I would like to listen to some music um, that will soothe me why do you listen to music music is supposed to soothe you if I am to listen to a music which is rap which is a very tense music to what extent could it help me this is a matter of personal choice says Reem I am simply uh, telling or sharing my own opinion you are saying at the beginning, uh, you said that rap does not represent me as an Arab. I can say that it does not represent your choice or your person, but apparently, apparently that uh, there are many persons who are Arabs um, and who um, do not relate to this kind of music. Yes? The, the discussion about rap, rap, you're saying it's Western music, it's Western music. The origins is not Western music. And music crosses all boundaries. I mean, there's a lot of Latin music and Arabic music. You want to talk about Western music? You're talking about classical music, per se. And if you look at Arabic music and you go back to the 40s, you go back into the 20s, there's a lot of Western influence back in the music back then that you hear. So rap is... is it crosses all cultures, so it addresses the audience that needs to hear that. It's spoken poetry to a rhythm, and it's spoken in many places in the world now in different ways. And I think that you can't categorize music as Western and Arab. It's, we are influenced by it all. Also, there's like, we, we, we didn't, you know, still got the chance to see how it's going to evolve in the Arabic world. But hip hop, as you were saying, is a very tense thing. It's not so tense. You got like many different types of hip hop right now. It's like rock. You got like indie rock, punk rock, glam rock, hard rock. Now we're facing the very same thing with hip hop. There are some people who are entertainers, and uh, that's the people you get to see on TV. And they don't rap social issues for many reasons that are politics. Uh, the labels and the big major, you know, they would give, like for example in France, people from the suburbs who would rap about social issues, about cops and how they get bitten up and how there's unemployment. For example, the guy from, a, you know, this big ass label, he would say, okay, you know what, you're gonna drop the, um, you know, the social subject and the politics subject. Let's talk about girls and uh, guns, because that's street cred. And that's the biggest problem that we got with the commercial rap. And now you also face different things. You have electro rap, and mostly it's it's more. Um, sometimes it's you, you got humoristic rap. People make like 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 funny stories, and some of them uh, are more tense, like you said. And some rap is really smooth. For example, you can get like some Mos Def albums, which are really laid back. So you cannot say there's one type of rap anymore. This is. This is this is like a, this is not a topic that 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 still is you know it's still on. But 
I think that we all wish to evolve and to listen to different types of rap. One last question and we're done. One last question. It's a very short question. I don't know if it will turn out to become a question. You said that maybe we can we can no longer talk about um, a cultural identity. I think that uh, the I uh, the identities or the definitions um, we all we can talk about uh, uh, European uh, classical or ethnic uh, music, and this is a catastrophe. Bef before we talk about postmodernism, this is an idea that is actually uh, related uh, to the mandate or to the. Um, cultural mandate or the political mandate. So I think that there is a problem with the definition per se. I do not know whether the word Western or uh, Oriental or rap expresses something specific. Maybe we could have better definitions in order to understand. Are you talking about classical music? Uh, classical music can be European or non-European. Yes, and we do not want uh, to define because we do not want uh, to have a dialogue that goes in one way. Now we have uh, different ideas, we have different opinions, and apparently everyone's, uh, everyone is actually on with uh, some ideas. Now if we impose ourselves, if we impose um, a specific way of expression from the beginning, it's as if we have um, the uh, end of the way uh, specified. Uh, and we will make it there, definitely we'll make it there. Yes, sir, maybe um, this is our last question. Yes, hello, hi Khaled. In 2011, we in, we in Syria finished uh, the recording of around 2000 songs that were not uh, heard, which are th songs that are actually uh, recited in uh, the governorates in uh, cities and towns. Unfortunately, the project uh, did not uh, lead to any tangible results as a result of the conflict. And we have noted that things vary according to cities. Uh, from Dara to Aleppo, things change, of course. If you go from one region to another, you could sense this difference. Now, What's interesting in such an experience, and I'm not a musician, but uh, this is what we had worked on. What was interesting is that most of the discussions that we had with uh, the persons who are interested um, in music have the same concerns that we are voicing out right now. Which means that all those elements I have discovered that there are some popular singers who are from the local bu bureaus, however, they are not known outside the region, however. In fact, uh, there was actually a shortage in the process of bridging. There is a lack of bridging and we are unable to enjoy, for example, the rababe, which is as well an instrument. Even the rababe in Syria varies, and the technique of playing the rababe changes from one region to another. So what's very interesting um, in the debate is that um, the more or the higher levels you have, the more you discover problems. Of course, we have problems in terms of how to reach out and, of course, uh, funding who is the person who will actually be capable of funding such a bridging. This is apparently a crisis because this is what I have seen in around 1,000 villages and this is what I am witnessing on larger scales. So to answer you, is it a politicized problem? I think that the real problem is that we are unable to understand the mechanisms. We're not uh, discussing this in terms of production. So if we recognize those arts, and this is a question, 
and if we work in the region on this production which is a production that has its own instruments will we be capable of going a step further in this production thank you thank you sir maybe you can in one short sentence to conclude or to answer the question because we have uh, to stop our uh, streamlining and the other translation however we can continue our offline discussion yes sir in one sentence i could say that uh, we do not uh, believe in our capacities or competencies and um, we each underestimate the other and this is what is uh, actually paralyzing our production khalid i agree with uh, ziad on this and we can keep in mind that we are producers and that we can produce this yes thank you whether it's uh, eastern western rap uh, or uh, Eastern, um, Oriental, or Classical, all this is possible. Yes, Karin? Scales before, and uh, actually in France, a lot of rappers were criticized because, because they got too American. So it's all a matter of scales, I guess. <laughs> Uh, so I would like to thank Alex and Hannibal. I would like to uh, to thank Galwa, uh, Zico, uh, Patrick, Eli, and um, we have next week as well a debate. We will be sharing with you information, and you can of course be informed with this discussion on Facebook. Um, and on our, our Facebook page. Uh, thank you very much. We would like to thank uh, the audience for all those who are actually following us on, on our uh, live uh, broadcasting. And of course, we would like to uh, hear from you in terms of your opinion about um, uh, this dialogue. Thank you very much. Thank you.